Hey, Marshall here from Sparkfun Engineering. Today I'll be doing a simple thermal test for you. I'll be measuring the temperature rise on a linear regulator using a thermocouple and a thermal cam to see kind of what it looks like. This is meant as an introduction to taking data with thermocouples and to see what it looks like on a graph. First, let's take a look at the tools I'll use. This is the FLIR Pi cam running the example lepton module QT application. We're seeing auto contrast happen when the spikes of temperature enter the frame. The hottest point scales to white, and it's good for seeing the temperature variations of a thing. To get numeric temperature data, I'm using a thermocouple breakout board attached to a red board. In the description, I've got a program that spits out comma-separated variables. To calibrate the temperature data, I've got an IR thermometer. I'll take a reading of the probe tip and enter it in the program. Here's an example graph of the output data. You can see how the temperature started to approach some kind of an equilibrium, but then I turned it off. We've also got the usual suspects like a power supply, multimeters, and a resistive load. The circuit we'll be testing is a 7805 5 volt linear regulator in a standard configuration with two 10 microfarad caps. We'll watch voltage in and out with the multimeters. The regulator works by being a resistor of sufficient value such that the output current draws the voltage into regulation. It can be thought of as a self-adjusting voltage divider. The power lost as heat is the difference between the input and output powers. In an Arduino-like configuration with some strong LEDs, we, we may be regulating down from 12 volts and consuming up to 200 milliamps. Because power equals voltage times current, we have 2.4 watts going in, 1 watt coming out, and thus 1.4 watts must be lost as heat. We'll measure the temperature under these conditions and then create a graph. The datasheet lists thermal resistances between the junction and ambient air to 50 degrees C per watt. With 1.4 watt of waste power, this will be about 70 degrees rise above ambient temperature. Total, the junction will get to 95 degrees C. Alternately, if we use the junction to case resistance of 5 degrees C per watt, and then add a heat sink with a surface to ambient resistance of 10 degrees C per watt, we would expect 1.4 watts times 15 degrees C per watt plus 25 degrees ambient for 46 degrees C. For verification, a decade box is used that is rated to only one quarter watt, but can sustain short term current spikes. This will be used to verify the circuit, and then I'll kick it into a high ohms mode, and we'll short shunt it out with a 25 ohm load. These ceramic resistors sum to 24, which is pretty close. Temperatures may read a tad high. The first test we'll run is the regulator in open air. I'll glue the thermocouple as close to the center of the body of the component as possible. Keep an eye on the temperature readings to the left. This shows what the thermocouple is reading. Okay, I'll start the tests and put my hand in for temperature reference. Keep an eye on the temperature output of the program. The program takes a reading every 5 seconds and displays it as time, comma, temperature, degrees C. Okay, the temperature has stabilized around 92 degrees. Here's what the data looks like in a graph. The next test is to mount the 7805 on a solderable breadboard without a lot of copper pour. This emulates mounting on a circuit that's got a lot of traces and not a lot of ground. We've stabilized at about 72 degrees. You can see that the heat didn't really dissipate through the board very well. Graphed, the data looks like this. This circuit board has large ground planes so that will resemble mounting the 7805 on a copper pad. Let's see what happens. It's still creeping up a little, but I'm gonna turn it off here around 55 degrees. It looks like it's about stable. Here you can see that the heat was drawn along the copper pour and it really helped to cool the device. Now with the basic TO220 heat sink, let's start the test. Moving in close, we can see that the entire heat sink is about the same temperature. The heat is flowing quickly to all parts where it can dissipate into the air. Once the temperature is close to the final value, it can take hours to actually stabilize it. So I'll stop this test around 61. Interesting to note, you can see how the heat transfers to other objects and is seen as a dip on the graph. For the last test, we'll add a fan to circulate air over the heatsink. 
This basically solves the problem completely, except adds the mechanical complexity, as well as the failure possibility of a fan. Graphed all together, you can see the differences in component temperatures for the various configurations. These tests give me information I can use to make selections on mounting based on power loads and expected operating temperatures. Well, I hope that gives you some insight on how to mount parts and how variable the temperatures can be, as well as what to expect with a linear regulator. If this were an actual product, you'd see the temperature change in correlation with how much current is being drawn. Collecting and graphing data is fundamental to figuring out if a product you've designed can withstand its environment. Until next time, thanks for watching!